Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation D VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'll be featuring the best Wo Chan team from the 2023 Pokemon Video Game World Championships. This team was built and piloted by Joseph Ugarte, who has been one of the best VGC players in the world for multiple years, and he made it to the top 32 of the World Championships, top cutting the event as well with this team. Wochan's well, been a really interesting pick in VGC. It sees way less usage than the other Treasures of Rune, but I think this is such a well constructed team. And the idea is to use Wochan to disrupt your opponent's physical attackers. It's really bulky, and this team has so much bulk to work with. You've got things like Eerie Impulse from Thunderous, Snarl from Wochan, as well as Intimidate from Landorus. And so your Pokemon are going to be surviving a lot more frequently than your opponents generally anticipate. And Wochan is just a very interesting Pokemon that few players have experience fighting against. So, as always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below. And thanks so much, as always, for joining me. If you enjoy, would really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribe to the channel really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's get started. Breaking things down, as always, team creator, rental, and paste are linked down in the description below. And this is Joseph Ugarte that we're talking about. He is one of the best players in the world in VGC. Multiple top cut of the world championships, both this year and last year. Multiple regional championship titles. Top four at multiple international championships as well. And if you are looking for truly the best players in the world, Joe is one of them. So please go check him out. It was really cool to see him bring this team to Worlds in particular, because I always thought Joe was a little bit more of an aggressive player in terms of his play style, and I actually thought this team was really different from most of the teams that he's shown excellence with, and it really goes to show how versatile of a player he is. And honestly, to bring Wo Chan to Worlds, that in itself is a huge call, because this Pokemon is not common at all, and I think Wo Chan actually makes so much sense on this team after trying it out. So just wanted to say that first, and question of the day, I want to know if you could create an ability like the Rune abilities, what would you do down in the comments? section below. Joe actually gave me some really detailed notes about this team, and so I'm just going to relay those to you because it's rare that I get exact information on spreads and matchups as well. So once again, huge, huge thank you to Joe. Now, the first Pokemon to talk about is Wo Qian. Wo Qian is not going to carry games, but what it does is basically allow the rest of the team to survive for longer periods of time, and that's a really big deal. Also, this is just a fairly physical format. You've got Pokemon like Rillaboom, Landorus T, Urshifu, for example, and so being able to reduce those Pokemon's damage output in general is really important. This Wo Chan is basically designed to disrupt your opponent, Giga Drain and Foul Play for good damage, Giga Drain for sustain. That in itself, by the way, really valuable into Water Urshifu, and then Snarl is really valuable into all of those special attackers. With the amount of defense investment that you have here, with the Citrus Berry, you can eat two Intimidated Close Combats uh, from Urshifu, thanks to the Tablets of Rune, and so that's really nice. General idea behind this Pokemon is that it just stays on the field for a while and protects both itself and its teammate, and with Poison Terra, it's very valuable into a lot of endgames against physical attackers in particular. So the next Pokemon to talk about on the team, I would say, is actually Fluttermane, which isn't really anything too crazy, but Joe's Fluttermane is unique in that it has Hex. The main thing about Hex here is that it synergizes incredibly well with Thunderous, which is generally going to be clicking Thunder Wave often, but also has Wild Bolt Storm. Now, Wild Bolt Storm is pretty inconsistent of a move on average, but on Joe's team, it makes so much sense because you have so much bulk, right? You often are going to be staying in the field for a lot longer with Thunderous, especially thanks to Intimidate from Landorus, Wochan dropping your opponent's attack, and Eerie Impulse from Thunderous as well, Snarl from the Wochan. So the general idea is that you can just get a lot of good damage with Wild Bolt Storm alone. I think this is a really good call going into Worlds because Tornadus plus Water Urshifu was everywhere, and this just can counter that combination just by itself, especially with Water Terra from Thunderous. So Rocky Helmet, really valuable item but back to the main point you've got flutter main here so it synergizes really nicely with the thunder wave into hex combination that can pick up a knockout onto so many different things cresselia if they're not fully specially invested for example i had one game where my opponent had greninja plus annihilate and they like tear it annihilate and then i just thunder wave hex them and just it ko them immediately and like it won me the game basically uh flutter here by the way is really fast with timid 148 speed evs i think the flutter wars are really interesting especially now that all these teams from the world championships are out because people have been speed creeping even that 
that. But going into worlds, this would outspeed the majority of flutter mains that you're going to run into. And that in itself was really nice. And you've got a lot of bulk here as well between HP and defense. And it's further augmented by the fact that you do have the intimidate and you do have the uh, tablets of rune here. So uh, Thunder was already talked about a little bit earlier, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the main thing to call out here is that you've got eerie impulse, which I think is really cool. I've had a lot of games where I just eerie impulse a special attacker turn one to just make them fairly useless, like something like a Specs Flutter main, and it puts them into a fairly tricky position. Uh, Joe stressed that the water terror on this is really important because it just gives you a lot of defense into moves that normally would be super effective into this team. And obviously this is really good into water Urshifu specifically, thanks to the water terra plus the Rocky Helmet. You've also got Landers T on this team. This Landers T can live in Icicle Crash and a Fake Out comfortably when you have the Intimidate and you have Terra flying. So that's important because Chimp out with Icicle Crash is obviously really common. It also lives Mystic Water, Admin 252 Surging Strikes with Terra Water when you are in Terra flying. The general idea is that you just obviously have a lot of bulk to work with and it just does a lot of damage across the board. Main thing to call out here is that you don't have Earthquake, which you might be used to when using Landris, um, but you just don't have that many Pokemon you can safely Earthquake next to and you kind of want all the other moves on this Landris set as well. Urshifu here is your standard Urshifu set, but the EV spreads are very unique. As you see, Joe has a ton of bulk on his Urshifu. And the idea behind this is to live two Choice Specs Terra Fera Dowsing Gleams when your Terra Water is active and your opposing Flutter Main is Eerie Impulse. Now, that sounds like a pretty oddly specific scenario, but it is going to come out fairly frequently, right? You could see games where maybe you just lead Thunderous Urshifu, you're up against that Flutter Main immediately, you go Eerie Impulse, Water Terra, Surging Strikes, right? So the general idea is to survive that, but obviously that also allows you to survive a lot of other special attacks that your opponents might not anticipate you to survive. And the reason you can get away with this on this Urshifu is because you have speed control from Thunderous and Thunder Wave, and then you also just have a lot of bulk to work with on the team in general, so it's not as important for Urshifu to just outpace your opponent. So this is actually one of the bulkiest Urshifu spreads I've seen come out the World Championships, but I think it makes a lot of sense on a composition like this. The last Pokemon is Heatran, and this is a pretty standard Heatran set, but the main thing to call it is the Terra Fairy. Uh, Terra Fairy just gives you some other coverage, like grass is obviously really common on Heatran, but I think Fairy means that you are really good into Darker Shifu as well as Chiyu, and both of those Pokemon were fairly common going into the World Championships, um, but you have to obviously keep that in mind because if you're playing Heatran versus opposing Heatran, uh, the opposing Heatran can Earth Power you, and if they're a Grass Terra, you're not going to win that trade-off, so be careful about that. But yeah, I think this is uh, specifically designed for some very specific matchups. You're not going to Fairy Terra Heatran that frequently, but if you see those Dark types like Chiyu, like Dark Urshifu, then you want to prioritize this. So yeah, that's it for a quick breakdown, and I will now quickly highlight some of the combos that you can go with. So Joe mentioned that the default modes with this team are Thunderous plus Fluttermain or Thunderous plus Landorus as a lead. These are generally pretty flexible and allow you to deal massive amounts of damage when you go with Thunderous and Fluttermain because of the T-Wave plus Hex combination. That can just snipe things off very quickly. Thunderous, Landorus, a tail as old as time, but the idea is, of course, get the Intimidate, you have Eerie Impulse Pressure, you can U-turn out, or you can just go for Terra and start dealing lots of damage. I think when selecting Pokemon with this team, I actually start with Wo-Chan, and I ask myself, does it make sense to bring Wo-Chan into the matchup? And it's valuable if your opponent has a lot of physical attackers, for example, if you can see Wo-Chan winning a 1v1 end game, if you think the damage reduction is crucial enough to bring it, and if the answer is no, it makes team preview a lot easier, obviously. So, yeah. I think, for example, like Thunderous Flutter with Landorus, Wo-Chan, really strong core of four. Um, I think Heatran is probably the Pokemon I've brought out the least. It's a little bit more situational, but it's really important in those situational matchups. For example, it's going to be very important into those teams with Tornadus, Golden Go, and Reggie Drago, or Dark Urshifu, for example. If you're going up against like Chiyu and Fluttermane, for example, then Heatran can also be pretty valuable in the back. But in terms of leads, yeah, I think like leading Thunderous with really anything on this team other than I'd say Wo Chan is generally not a bad call and Thunder is just a very strong utility Pokemon overall so yeah um, I think the main thing to keep in mind is basically do you want to lean more towards disrupting your opponent on the physical side with Landers and Wo Chan if they have a lot of physical attackers I do often bring both of those or is it more important to like disrupt with Eerie Impulse and also like how do I actually get big knockouts those are all questions I ask as I use this team but yeah if you're looking for easy combos Thunder Slaughter Thunder Slanderous uh, Urshifu plus the or sorry, Wochan plus Heatran, by the way, an oddly specific combo, but it can be really valuable into random things like Indity plus Armor Rouge, for example, where you can just disrupt with Snarl as well as substitute from Heatran. So, yeah. 
So in terms of weaknesses, I think the first thing to watch out for is that Flutter main is a really key part of this team in a lot of matchups. And if you don't trade positively with it, you'll often be significantly behind and it'll be difficult to win games. For example, I had a game where I led Thunderous Flutter into my opponent's Cresselia Iron Hands. In turn one, they switched Iron Hands, or sorry, Cresselia out into Ursa Luna. I went for T-Wave Hex into that slot. Neither move worked, and then they just got a one-hit knockout with Heavy Slam onto Flutter. I also had a game where my opponent had Galarian Zapdos, and they had Electric Terra on it, so I couldn't even Thunder Wave it, and went for Electric Terra, and it was Choice Scarf Braper, just knocks out Flutter Main on turn one. Stuff like that can really just put you in a huge deficit immediately, so you really have to think about that. Also, there are a lot of moves I can miss on this team. Thunder Wave, as well as the Wild Bolt Storm, Rock Slide here on the Landorus, Snarl on the Wochian, Heat Wave on the Heatran, so... Games will generally go on for longer periods of time when you use this team because you are fairly bulky, and as a result, I think you're more vulnerable to misses from moves. You're also vulnerable to things like critical hits, for example, and I think with this team in particular, your main means of speed control really is just thunderous clicking thunder wave, but a fair amount of the times you're going to be relying on the bulk of the team, so you will be occasionally, or more than occasionally, moving after your opponent, which then also makes you a little bit more vulnerable to things like crits, for example. I also think a well-played Champau is still pretty scary. Like, Champau and Fluttermane, this team has so many answers, but I had a couple practice games when I was getting hang a hang of the team, and, like, I just didn't position super well against Champau, and, for example, I would bring, like, Flutter, Thunderous, Landers, Wo Chan, and then I ended up, like, not going for Terra with Thunderous, and then the Champau kind of just cleaned up things, so that's scary. One other thing to think about is, I had a lot of smart opponents when I was first practicing practicing with this team that just basically respected Water Terra Thunderous and I would go for Water Terror on Thunderous on turn one, and they just wouldn't use like Searching Strikes, right? They would like switch out their Urshifu and then conserve Urshifu until an end game. And so I think that's one thing. Getting the value out of the Terra on this team is crucial. And there are a lot of games I felt when I was playing where I made a defensive Terra, it didn't work out, and then I just like missed having a Terra for the rest of the game. So you got to really keep that in mind, I think, when you use this team as well. But yeah, that's it for a couple of notes. Let's get into these games. Okay, what an interesting team here. We've got Serena Volcarona, as well as Torn Champau, Hands, and Urshifu. To me, I think Terra Landorus looks really good here. We have to be a little bit careful about Thunderous, because I can't necessarily go for as many like Thunder Waves as I'd like. Against these teams, the default lead is kind of Thunderous Flutter or Thunderous Landorus. Mm. Okay, I think I will go with Thunderous Flutter here with Landorus and Wochan in the back. Their team is fairly physical, so Wochan's an interesting pick, but it does have to worry about Bleak Wind from Tornadus as well as Bug Buzz from Volcarona, so just want to flag those as things to be careful about. I think our Urshifu is also a pretty strong bring, but there are a couple concerns. Weakness to Tornadus. Serena actually walls us decently well. If they bring Serena, I think one of the questions I have is what set are you? U-turn is fairly common on that Pokemon. I think Landorus here is probably our best terror option. It just does so much damage to everything on their side, and with the Assault Vest, helps out against things like the Tornadus and Volcarona. And Intimidate's just really good. Jimpow hands. Okay, this works out. I think the main debate I have on turn one is like... I would personally love to say like switch into Landorus here. Hmm. Switch into Landorus, and then go just for Dazzling Gleam. I think the problem here is that they can just, like, theoretically Icicle Crash into the Thunderous slot. I think a defensive Terra with Thunderous here would have made some sense. I think Thunderous Landorus lead may have been better for me. So, let's see. We've got a quick Intimidate off. Flutter's obviously applying a lot of offensive pressure, but it's also threatened by a lot of offense from their end. They're gonna go straight for a Terra here. I thought one play that makes sense is Protect Champau and then just like Heavy Slam into Flutter here. So it is gonna be Hands going for Terra. Ground Terra, what? 
That's a new one. But they just went fake out onto Landorus. And I'm faster than Champa. Okay. Ground Terror Iron Hands. That is really interesting. They did double up onto the Landorus slot. It's funny because I was like, oh, that's our most important Pokemon to Terra here. But given how that turn one played out, this is actually fine. It is Wochan time. Okay. So one of the things I have to consider is how do I deal enough damage to win this game, right? And who do I Terra? I actually don't necessarily want to Terra Wochan right now knowing I have the faster Flutter main. I am happy to go for Foul Play onto Iron Hands and Dazzling Gleam. Okay, Champa protects, but Hands should not get a knockout onto either slot here, especially with Intimidate and Wochan existing. I wonder if there's any world in which Gleam and Foul Play just KOs. I thought about going for a Terra with Flutter there. I actually think that could have been enough. Ah, uh, maybe. It's really close. And they just go for Earthquake, okay. Yeah, I mean, that explains the ground Terra, but it just doesn't do that much with Intimidate plus the Wochan being on the field, I think. Yeah, nice. We should definitely survive a Sucker Punch as well from Champao. So here I'm happy to go for... I think Snarl is interesting because I can see Volcarona switching in right now. So Snarl and Dazzling Gleam. Yep, hand switches. Is it Volk? Serena, okay, that's fine. Right now, they've brought in three physical Pokemon, so... Sucker Punch. Nice, we survived thanks to Wochan. You can see without Wochan, that would have KO'd us, right? So, would have been pretty scary. I think my biggest question right now is the Serena set. Are you Choice Scarf? Because if not, I think we are positioned for Flutter to potentially sweep, but I'm really glad to showcase this game because Wochan made all the difference in Flutter surviving. Just wasn't expecting Ground Terror on the hands, but if it was like Water Terror, which is pretty standard, it just opens the door for our other Pokemon to thrive in this matchup. I think I still have Terra. Volcarona from there is probably the scariest Pokemon, but it's Urshifu, which I'm very happy to see. And it is Water Urshifu. Okay. So I think Wochan has really good sweeping potential from this point on. I'm happy to Poison Terra this turn. Mm, I could conserve my Terra and like Water Terra this, right? Because that gives us a pretty nice end game into Urshifu, but I think going for Poison Terra and then just Foul Play to eliminate Serena here is fine. And the reason I want a Terra here is because I'm worried about U-turn from Serena. And I think I want to switch Flutter out into Thunderous right now. Thunderous is just a great switch in thanks to Rocky Helmet and the damage reduction from their end. With this, I can also pressure with Bleak Wind, not Bleak Wind, Wild Bolt in subsequent turns. So I think Wochan's really well positioned. My opponent brought entirely physical attackers in this match. So the lack of Volcarona makes this easier for us, that's for sure. I think the main thing is that turn one in this game was pretty scary, but feeling decent about this spot. Okay, they just go for Surging Strikes. Look how little damage that does. 24 per hit. There's Rocky Helmet number one. Rocky Helmet number two. And you can see how important Wochan is and just like really not taking too much damage, right? Because without Wochan, Surging Strikes is a two-hit knockout onto Thunderous, but Wochan, with Wochan, that did maybe like just over a third. Yep, and they go for low kick. Beautiful. Okay. Foul play on a Serena. Ah, they're Rocky Helmet. That's interesting. Okay. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm happy to just Giga Drain the Urshifu now and Wild Bolt. Can't go for Thunder Wave. So they're going to protect. Probably strikes now into the... Yep, Wochan slot, but... Look how little damage we take from this. Like, one of the reasons I love this team is because it's so anti-Urshifu. Like, the combination of Thunderous, Wochan is just so sick. So, like, yeah. And I think, like, Wochan just isn't going to lose to Serena or the Iron Hands. Although I suppose they can go for an Earthquake onto us, but we're faster, so it's fine. I actually would have preferred to miss Wild Bolt Storm there, so Giga Drain just gets the knockout, but 
the damage reduction in this game has been absolutely nuts, right? The Sucker Punch damage reduction allows the Flutters to survive. The damage reduction on Thunderous prevents us from getting to it knocked out by Surging Strikes. The Poison Terra here really valuable in just not really taking any super effective attacks from things like Low Kick or Close Combat, for example. So, Hands comes back out. Yep, that's fine. And at this point, Flutter Dazzle should also just win the game. I'm happy to just Giga Drain into Hands and Wall Bolt Storm. And they end up forfeiting. So that is Wo Chien Unleashed. I'm just really happy to showcase what it can do. Because I also think like even beyond just the damage reduction, it was just really good once Chien Pao went down. Because Giga Drain and Foul Play just did so much damage across the board. But of course, its ability was absolutely essential for us in this game. And I think what made things easier was the lack of Volcarona. But I can understand why you wouldn't want to bring Volcarona into a matchup when you see Heatran... Urshifu and Landers in team preview, right? It's like all of those give Volcarona a substantial amount of trouble, and Volk just takes a long time to get going. A lot of Volk sets are like Quiver Dance, for example. So, yeah. Uh, and we had answers against it as well, right? It's like Thunderous has Eerie Impulse. Uh, Wo Chan can just go for Poison Terra and Snarl as well. So, yeah. All right. We've got Cress, Ursaluna, Tornadus, Flutter, Urshifu, and Hand. So, Pseudo, Trick Room, and Tailwind. Against Ursaluna, like Landers and Wochan are both very important. Um, in these matchups, I generally prefer Thunderous Flutter lead with Landers Wochan in the back. Uh, the idea behind this is I can just go for Thunder Wave and Hex onto Cresselia potentially on turn one. And most Cresselias run a fair amount of defense investment, so you're not max special defense. And if you're not max special defense, max HP, then Thunder Wave plus Hex can just get a one hit KO. And this Fluttermane is decently speedy as well, so if you look at my opponent's team, they don't really have any resistances to Fairy early, which is good. I think Heatran here feels really awkward given the Ursaluna. We just don't do enough damage to it quickly enough, and like, if they didn't have like Lunar Blessing on Cresselia, then yeah, maybe Heatran makes sense where you just slowly chip away with Heat Wave turn after turn, but with Cresselia being able to go for Lunar Blessing, that's a pretty major problem. So, let's see. General idea here. Ideally, get an early knockout with the Thunderous Flutter combination with Hex and Thunder Wave. That's Hands plus Tornadus. Oh, that's a really interesting lead. Okay. Huh. I think against this, I'm personally happy switching Flutter out into Landorus and then just going for Wild Bolt Storm. One of the reasons why I think this team is so smart is because Thunderous has a very favorable matchup in the Tornadus, and Tornadus teams going into the World Championships were everywhere, and they continue to be everywhere. So, yep, we're going to switch in. They just go straight for Tailwind, which is fine. Curious if it's like Volt Switch or Heavy Slam here. Cool, Heavy Slam and Landorus, yep, that works out. And while Bolt Storm does not miss, which is great. Excellent damage onto Torn, and decent chip onto Hands as well. That chip damage on Hands makes me think that it's not actually Assault Vested. Huh, I did a lot more than I expected. Like, with that, I'm happy to just go for Wild Bolt Storm again. I think... Is there any chance this has Ice Punch? I've just lost my Landers to so many random Ice-type attacks recently. <laughs> But, I don't know. I think Wild Bolt and Stomping is just pretty safe here. Yep, they go for Taunt. If you have Ice Punch, so be it. How did I know? But I end up surviving anyway. I just had a weird feeling that it would, because, like, I think if you're leading Tornadus Iron Hands, it indicates to me that your Iron Hands is actually decently speedy enough to actually capitalize off Tailwind, right? And we just saw it outspeed our Pokemon here, so, yeah. But, man, I just got a double knockout, so I'll take that. I'm up 4-2 already. The question is now, what does my opponent have in the back, right? Because they definitely have a lot of comeback potential. That's Fluttermane, which isn't surprising. And Urshifu. Dark Urshifu, huh? I could definitely still get swept from this position.
Hmm. Man, I was hoping it'd be water or Shifu. Um, I'm thinking I actually switch Thunderous out into Wo Chien right now. And I doubt I ever get an attack off here. I actually think it's very likely I lose both Pokemon to just like a Dazzling Gleam Wicked Blow. But the idea is if I can pivot Thunderous back in, that's really crucial because it allows me to Thunder Wave or Eerie Impulse. And both of those are really nice right now. Here's the Terra. The main thing about Wo Chan in this game is I don't think the damage reduction is really that critical. Okay, if it's also Terra Urshifu, I think there's a decent chance this is just Choice Banded. Yeah, so they go for Gleam. I might survive Wicked Blow here. I would actually expect to, especially with the damage reduction. Hmm. Do we expect it to be Banded Urshifu? I would say yes. Oh, that literally did nothing. I was like, is Wo Chan going to survive? <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> okay. So, I think we need to first stall out the Tailwind, right? So, I need to go into Thunderous first. <sighs> that did just such little damage. Um... I could poison Terra here. I think personally what I want to do is protect Wo Chan. Yes, if they're not choice, that means they can close combat me, but that's honestly fine. Because what I can also do is Thunder Wave into Fluttermane. Meaning that my Flutter will guarantee outspeed you. And then end the game with my Flutter. Because I won't lose both Pokemon this turn. Okay. I actually wonder if Eerie Impulse was correct here instead. I think that may have been the better play. Because if I Eerie Impulse and I just bring out Flutter, Fairy, Terra, Dazzling, Gleam. Yeah, I'm not sure I actually needed to be going for Thunder Wave there. Okay, they Wicked Blow into Thunderous. Yeah, that's fine. Rocky Helmet breaks his Sash, which is pretty critical. They just go for Gleam. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think Eerie Impulse was probably the play there, but I think it's also fine. Uh, I've set up this endgame with Fluttermane now. Uh, let me double check the speed of this. There's a chance we outspeed Flutter, but they might still be faster than us. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Like, I'm actually thinking about who to click Terra with right now. Because if you're not Specs Flutter, I mean, if you're Specs Flutter, you're just locked in, right? Nah, I think I still need to Terra this and Dazzle. I just, I honestly don't know my Dark Terra Urshifu Calx very well. Like, it feels like Focus Sash, not Choice Ban, given the lack of damage into Wo Chan and Thunderous. But I guess the Thunderous is so bulky on this team. Okay, they do detect though, so that's what I thought, yeah. Uh, one of the big questions then is, what is their Flutter main item and how fast are you? So this is actually going to be a really close finish. I think this is why Eerie Impulse would have been better. I didn't need to be that worried about, like, Shadow Balls. Oh, that did so much, though. Okay, I think we just win. Wolchan gets crit, though. Um, so now it's a question of whether or not their Sucker Punch KOs my Flutter. If not, this should just be a double knockout. Okay, there's the Sucker Punch. Nice. This Flutter is 108 HP, 132 defense, so I figured we'd be good there, but yeah. Can't help but think Eerie Impulse was actually the right play on Flutter earlier instead of Thunder Wave. Just wanted to make sure I outsped, but...
The thing is, because I had my Terra anyway, it's not like I had to like guarantee the paralysis on it to worry about something like Shadow Ball coming out. But I will say the Fairy Terra Gleam onto their Flutter definitely did more than expected. Like it feels like their Flutter just doesn't really have too much bulk. Because the scary thing is if it's not even a two-hit knockout onto Flutter. But I guess how much bulk would you even need for that? Probably a ton, right? So yeah, because this is, it is Fairy Terra Choice Specs Gleam that that does do a lot. Um, I think the main thing in this game was trying to maneuver the mid game because we had a huge lead, obviously, but. Um, like, one of the things I was asking myself is, do I Terra Wochan? But I just, like, didn't love the idea of going for Terra, um, because I thought Wochan was just fairly passive in this endgame and just didn't bring me enough momentum. Whereas, like, yeah, Flutter just does so much damage, especially after they commit to the Dark Terra on Urshifu. So I figured we'd survive the Sucker Punch, especially because I know this Flutter has a lot of HP and defense EVs, but definitely a little closer than I would have liked. Okay, Meow Scarada and everything else is fairly expected, but Meow Scarada is really interesting. Chimpao, Meow Scarada, Flutterlanders, Torn, Heatran. Should this just be a Fairy Terra Heatran game? Like, I feel like I don't bring Heatran that frequently with this team, but it looks decent here. I also think Terra Landers looks really good. Hmm. So I love leading Thunderous into these teams, but I think if you're my opponent and you want to counter the Thunderous, a Landorus plus Champao lead is very good from their end. Uh, it feels wrong to drop Thunderous because of its matchup into Tornadus, but like, I don't know. Landorus Champao here scares me a lot. Like, I'm actually thinking about Landorus and Flutter here. Do I bring back Thunderous? Part of me wants Wo Chan, honestly. But I wonder if Wo Chan's just too passive here. Landorus Flutter, what do I not want to face when leading this? I think it's pretty good across the board. Okay, I'm going to go Urshifu Wochan. I think Thunderous or Heatran are maybe better than Wochan here, but I'm curious how I can make Wochan work in this matchup. The answer might be that it just isn't that great because we don't do enough damage or reduce enough damage. But I think just having it for Champao alone is pretty good. And like I think Landorus, Meowskarada, right? So many physical attackers on their side. Horn Champao, okay. Honestly, Thunderous would have been pretty good here then, but this is fine. Um, I think with this, I'm happy to just pivot out. Uh... So the question is, do they Tailwind and just like go for an Ice-type attack? We have a lot of bulk on Urshifu, right? It's like almost max special defense, so I actually don't hate the idea of just switching into Urshifu turn one and going for Dazzling Gleam. I just want to, one, conserve HP on Landorus for now. Okay, they just Tailwind. If it's Tailwind and Ice-type attack into the Landorus slot, which is now Urshifu, that would be super ideal. But they do target Flutter, which is still fine. Like, we had the Intimidate, so we'll survive. Yep. Even with Life Orb. And no flinch. Okay, beautiful. I will gladly take that turn. Life Orb Champau, by the way, something that's definitely been popping up recently. Especially thanks to two-time Japanese national champion Hirofumi Kimura running it. Ooh, Meow Skarada. Okay. Hmm. So now you just go for Bleak Wind and then probably Flower Trick. But I think we just probably right now sacrifice Urshifu. Sorry, uh, sacrifice the Flutter Main. Get a free switch in into Landorus and then just Terra Landorus. And then I can pivot Urshifu out into Wochian. Yep, so there's Flower Trick. Meow Scrub honestly really cool as an answer into Urshifu. I think that's really smart. Oh, if they miss Bleak Win here, they just lose immediately, by the way. But they do connect. Okay. 
scary using Bleak Wind in a situation like that. I could have pivoted Flutter out into Landorus, but I'm just looking for the free switch into Landorus right now. Don't want to take any risks. Uh, I actually think my main concern right now is probably a potential Sash on the Meowskarada. Two, two turns of Tailwind. Like, I personally want to switch Urshifu out into Wo Chan right now. I think Urshifu into Wo Chan and actually not going for Terra and U turn here is fine. Because that'll knock out Meowskarada. It covers for Meowskarada switching out. And if I bring you down to Sash, then my Urshifu can just click Aqua Jet into that slot for a knockout. The downside is Wo Chan switching in will have to eat up a potential Bleak Wind Storm, but this Wo Chan is like max HP, 92 special defense EVs, and it's got Citrus Berry. So we'll bring Wo Chan out. Huh! Sunny day to try to reduce the damage from Urshifu. And they Flower Trick into Landorus. Okay, nicely done. Shouldn't KO us though. Yeah, that actually really does not do very much at all. Shoutouts to Wo Chan. And it is Sashed. Okay, cool. That works though, right? Because I get you down to Sash. I can Aqua Jet that slot. The main thing is I'm fairly weak to Bleak Wind right now, and I have to consider who I want to Terra, right? I think Poison Terra Wo Chan actually makes a ton of sense to me. I mean, Water Terra Urshifu is also just not that bad, right? What do we think their last one is? I'm pretty worried about Fluttermane, so I actually think I want to go for the Poison Terra here. Snarl? Like, this covers for switch-ins, and then Aqua Jet into Meowskarada. Because, okay, uh, I guess the problem with going for this Terra is if their last one is Landorus, but, I mean, if their last one is Landorus, what I can do is then just protect Wochan, switch my Urshifu out into my Landorus. The main set I would be losing to is a Sword Stance Landorus, but anything else, it would be okay. Bruh. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't even know that had ally switch. Rocky Helmet? Nope. Bleak Wind. Misses Urshifu. Okay. And Wochan really doesn't take too much. Drops my speed. That's fine. And Snarl connects. Nice. Ally switch. Very cool. Focus Sash, Flower Trick, Ally Switch, Meowskarada. I honestly think that's probably the most optimal way to run that Pokemon right now. It's funny, Meowskarada dominated VGC in the beginning of Scarlet and Violet, but it just completely fell off in subsequent series. Uh, it is Landorus as their last one, so now my Terror on Wochan isn't looking as smart, but that's okay. Mm. We just go for the knockout onto Tornadus right now. I'm happy to, I think, pivot Wo Chan out into Landorus. I think Wo Chan into Landorus and then protecting Urshifu this turn is fine. Yeah. Like an in immediate intimidate. Man, I just honestly really thought they would have Flutter as their last one, so that's why I just sent it with my Terra there. No Terra. Interesting. Ah, your Scarf Lando as well. Okay. Well, that's really good, no? Yeah, I'm not sure how you deal enough damage to win this game now. Like, I think Scarf Lando is the best set to run into. Uh, 104 down to 77. Yeah, you're barely damaging me. Two turns of Sunlight. Uh, I'm happy to just rock slide here. I should survive a bleak wind as well. So as long as we don't get double flinched here or like extremely crit, we should be good. But with rock slide and bleak wind and my opponent being faster, there's always a shot. I think you Terra Tornadus here, by the way, now. Uh, Wochan's going to just beat the Landers one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. So there's Terra Torn. Steel? Yep. Which is fine. Surging Strikes will still KO you. So it's a question of, do I make it through this turn? 
Yep, there's the Scarf Rock Slide. The Urshifu, as I mentioned, super bulky. Bleak Wind. Cool. Yeah, it doesn't even do half to Urshifu, my gosh. Urshifu does flinch. Last turn of Sunlight, though. Yeah, it's still fine. Um, they're just going to click Rock Slide and Bleak Wind again. The problem is Bleak Wind becomes single target on Urshifu. So what we're going to do here is just Rock Slide and protect this turn. Yeah, and I feel pretty confident with Wo-Chan as my last one, because that's definitely going to beat the Landers one-on-one, -on -one, especially because they committed to Rock Slide. Rock Slide was the only correct play for them, by the way, though, because if you commit to Stomping, like, you just lose to my Landers immediately. So it's one of those awkward positions where having a choice user in the end game means that you have to commit to one move, and if your opponent has multiple Pokemon, it's really hard to figure out what that right move is, right? So Bleak Wind into us, that's fine. Sunlight fades. My primary question right now, actually, no, the answer is definitely no. I was going to say whether or not Aqua Jet gets the knockout onto Tornadus, but I just don't think it does. Yeah. Uh, because of the damage reduction coming out. But we know I can survive another Rock Side and Bleak Wind. Uh, so I'm happy to just foul play here. I wonder if it's still correct to Aqua Jet, because it's like, you're not going to KO my Urshifu here anyway, right? So two Aqua Jets should KO you. Yeah, I'm actually happy to just Aqua Jet here anyway. Okay, we don't get the knockout, but like I said, the idea is to just uh, play around the flinch. They can get a crit with Bleak Wind here as well. Urshifu does survive. Cool. Yep, and Wochan flinch. That's exactly why I wanted to... I, like, I wanted to click Aqua Jet in the case they got a double flinch, right? So... This is the thing, like, Scarf Landers is actually a menace. You know, if they actually had Protect right now on Tornadus, they could... Oh, no, no, it doesn't matter, because I have Urshifu. Yeah, so Aqua Jet should just KO anyway. So their best bet is actually clicking Sunny Day right now. With Torn. And then hope for another flinch onto Wochian, but they don't Sunny Day. Okay, sick. That should be game over. There's... I mean, Landers, of course, can flinch, but, like, the Wochian is just so bulky, and I still have my berry, and they're intimidated. But... Honestly, a pretty scary endgame just because of Scarf Landorus, right? Like, they got multiple flinches on Urshifu as well as Wochian. But we still have the Citrus intact, and Wochian's just so nice in these endgames against physical attackers as they get another flinch. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, it's fine. I'll play Protect. At this point, I, I don't even know if they would have enough PP to... KO the Wochan. Let's see how much the Rock Slide hit does. We have to account for the fact it'll be single target after this turn. 134. Yeah, it's doing 17 per hit. We get Foul Play. Nice. And just Foul Play again. I wonder if Aqua Jet just KOs. Probably not, thanks to us reducing our own damage, but it's fine. This is why Scarf Landers has historically been one of the best sets in competitive Pokemon. Three flinches, right? But when you move first and you have a 30% chance to flinch every time the Rock Slide connects on an individual Pokemon, that's pretty dang good. But, yeah. As we saw, that last one did 17. Like, you would need another, like, four or five flinches in a row. But Aqua Jet does miss out on the KO, so here we go. <laughs> never say never. They actually crit the Urshifu, so if they crit Wochian there, that could have been kind of awkward. Do they get another flinch here? Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. It's always more optimal to just weave in protects in between. I, like, it's probably not necessary here, but, you know. I've seen Rockside actually win these games before, so might as well just account for PP on their side. Kind of crazy though, right? I think that was the fourth flinch now in this end game. And it's like, yeah, if any of those four flinches don't happen, this game is just is over, but they're still going to need quite a few more. Now, if they had crit the Wochan, that would have made things substantially more interesting, but they're still not doing enough per hit. So, yeah. Okay, here we go. 99 out of 78. Yeah, it's only... Uh, 
the the correct play is always i think to just protect to stall out more pp like there's no reason not to do that which i know as a viewer sometimes you can be frustrating when they're like such low hp but you might as well just like improve your odds because there is a world in which they actually get enough flinches uh but then i would still win off just them running out of pp from rock slide this is ridiculous though <laughs> like they're, they're doing exactly what they need to i mean ridiculous in the sense that we're in this situation um but they're playing to their outs absolutely and they made the right play right they, yeah, that's exactly why you lock into rock slide with the landers like i said if they had tried to stomping tantrum or earthquake my wochan 10 turns ago in the battle my landers would just win the game but <laughs> who thought we'd be in this scenario Okay, Landris needs, I think, like, four more flinches. So, let's just foul play. I haven't actually been keeping track of Rock Slide PP either, but... Like, the odds of us losing this game... Oh, yeah, see? <laughs> so, like, might as well get the guaranteed win by weaving in those protects, right? That was... What a game. Oh, shout out to Wochian, though. It's like, yeah, even with all those flinches, we have so much bulk. We have the Intimidate. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but... I think some of you are probably like, well, why are you going for all those protects in this end game was why, right? Might as well just like guarantee the win from that rather than uh, being fearful of more flinches or, or critical hits, for example. And yeah, I think if that crit had actually occurred on the Wochien, then things could have gotten really, really dicey. But that was definitely a wild end to a game that I thought I had won 10 turns ago for sure. All right, I have decided I'm bringing Wo Chen no matter what in this one. And they have Indy Armor Rouge with Champau, Dragonite, Landorus, and the Sneasler. So against Indy Armor Rouge, this duo was so good. But are they really going to lead that? I think like Champau, Landorus probably makes the most sense from their end. I said Champau Landorus. Uh, Champau Dragonite. The main thing in these matchups is what item is the Dragonite running? Because I had a practice game against something similar to this, and I led Wochan Heatran being like, okay, I cover for your NDD stuff. And then the Dragonite ended up not being choice banded, and so like turn one it went Aerial Ace into Wochan, and then turn two it just went Stomping Tantrum into Heatran. And that was really bad. The other question is, are you multi-skill or inner focus? I want to lead Wo Chen Heatran here. It's probably not the most optimal, but I want to do it. Landorus in the back, and Flutter is the fourth. I think Thunderous is actually a little awkward to bring in this matchup because they have Indy D, so setting up Psychic Terrain prevents us from going for our priority attacks with Prankster. And Wo Chen Heatran here. A lot of bulk to work with. It's mainly just if I play against Dragonite, like, what move do they want to click, right? And the other thing is I, like, would love to pivot in Landorus, but then if they nailed the Ice-type attack as I switch in, that's awkward. But it's Sneasler Entity. Okay. Interesting. Well, that works for me. Mm. <laughs> we have Fairy Terra here in Heatran, which is kind of awkward. But I think it's so easy to just, like, protect switch in Landers turn one, right? Like, the only thing this really loses to is... Uh, Sneezer could set up on me. I, like, set up Sneezer isn't that common, but it would actually be excellent here. But if I switch in Landers, suddenly it's like you're intimidated and I have Wochan out. What are you really doing to me, right? You could close combat Dire Claw into Wochan right now, which is why I'm protecting. Like, I feel like the only thing I'm really vulnerable to with this switch in is either Sneezer going for a setup move... Or Dire Claw into Heatran, which would be absolutely bonkers. And then nailing a status condition from that. Or, like, Psychic into that slot. Right? And I just take, like, 30%. They go for a Terra, which I'm honestly fine with. I think we have a huge advantage right now. Onto Sneasler, sure. Okay. Yep, that makes sense. So it's probably going for Rock Slide, which I'm honestly okay with. Yeah, just follow me. Okay, sure. This is not a bad turn one at all. Oh, no. Oh, I spent all of that time being like, I'm in such good shape. And then... 
<laughs> uh, this got really interesting, though. Okay. But the thing is, if you're running Dire Claw Close Combat Protect, Wo Chen actually still clears this pretty well. I think they go for Follow Me in another Sword Stance right now. I'm gonna be real. Oh, man. This just got so interesting. I'm a U-turn foul play expecting Follow Me Sword Stance. Oh, no. Are they just close co Are they rock sliding? I mean, this honestly doesn't do that much. You're at plus one and Wo Chan's out. I feel like U-turn foul play should just KO with you having that attack boost. As long as we don't flinch, we're good. But that's a big if. <laughs> oh man, Sword Stance Rock Slide, that's really cool. I did mention the stat boost thing, I just didn't think it would actually be there. No! Oh! What a tough flinch. That's so rough. Uh, <laughs> Cause foul play there, like you have the- we take advantage of their attack boost. But, hey, that's what happens. Okay, 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 okay. Um... Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is nuts. This is nuts. I mean, I want to bring Landorus in for another Intimidate. Part of me wants to just send it and click Moonblast. Hmm, I don't know if that's the right play. Oh man, that is a very unfortunate flinch. But like, the odds of them getting one flinch there are pretty high. It just felt so good after seeing how much damage you turned it. I was like, oh yeah, I think Foul Play just gets the knockout now. But that's the downside of using something like Wochan. You're just slower, so you're vulnerable to stuff like that. Yeah, so they go for Follow Me. I wouldn't be surprised if it's another Sword Stance right now. Oh, no, they just Rock Slide. Okay. Oh my gosh. I get crit. Oh my gosh, this is... <laughs> I'm getting wrecked! It's funny because we have decent answers for this too, but like, yeah, a flinch and a crit is very tough. If you're my opponent now, I think you should helping hand rock slide. Man, it did more to Flutter than I expected, I have to be honest. Yeah, like with Follow Me support and with no spread move on Landris, this is actually so hard. <laughs> oh. They helping hand? Yep. I'm just getting cleared by Rock Terra Rock Slide. This is nuts. It's doing so much, honestly. What? Why does my sneezer do not look like this? Swords Dance is the game changer, though, right? Because without Swords Dance, we would have just made this Pokemon basically completely useless. I wonder how it would have played out either. Like, I think as long as one of the flinch or the crit don't happen, we're fine. But the combination of those actually made this game really difficult. Um, but this is still definitely winnable, so I really don't want to just give up immediately. Like, I want to protect Fairy Terra. And Heat Wave here. <laughs> Excuse me. Sneezer's got me sweating here and sneezing. Sneezler pivots out into what? Armor Rouge? Oh, <laughs> getting wrecked. Oh, uh, you know, the thing is, we actually had such a... Yeah, it's still fine. And no, it's not fine. It's, it's totally not fine. Because, like, now you can just armor cannon into my... My Wo Chien. My sweet, sweet Wo Chien. You know, the... Oh my gosh, but they're not... 
prices just continue. It's probably weak ar uh, weakness policy, weak armor. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. I wonder if like Sneasler has like a way to activate it. We've seen Swords Dance Rock Slide. You would think Close Combat and Dire Claw. Games like this, it's, you know, it's always fun to go up against strats like this, and one, like, yeah, Swords Dance, honestly, really solid move. That's what saved my opponent in this game, and it's like, I got unlucky, but probably could have played better as well. Not probably, I definitely could have. Um, okay, I got Landris in the back. I wonder if there's any chance it outspeeds Armor Rouge. Like, they probably just Armor Cannon Wo Chan right now, right? So I feel like I should just be protecting here and then going for Earth Power. I don't mind trying to KO Sneasler and then pivot Wo Chan out into Landorus. Like, we could still win this game, so I don't want to give up. Bro, what? Yeah, it was worth the double. Oh, but we survive. But we fall asleep! What is going on right now? Honestly, in the grand scheme of things, that turn played out better than I expected. Endure? An armor rouge? Oh. What is your last one? Chim Pow. Can Heatran win this? I pivot out into Landorus. I don't even know if Earth Power KOs the the Armor Rouge. Like I want to go into Landorus and click Heat Wave here. I think Heatran wins this end game, honestly, but I don't know. Oh no! Wait, 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 wait. Uh, what if they activate their weakness? Can they even do that without, like, KOing themselves with Sucker Punch? Okay, they just Ice Cold Crash. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, don't flinch. Uh, they did double up on that slot. Oh, shoot. That was so much damage. No! I think I actually probably still lose if that was Sash Chan Pao. But if it wasn't Sash and we get that, we should just win the game because then I just Stomping Earth Power... Oi! What a series of events it's been. Also, I could have tried to just snarl with Wo Chan the turn I went for the double protect. Thought it was worth going for, but I honestly thought an armor cannon was going into that slot that turn. Okay, I can still play towards an Ice Go Crash miss. I mean, it, you actually shouldn't click Ice Go Crash. You should just click any other move. But I can play towards that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's GG. I'm sure it was Sash Champ House, so I think even if, if I didn't flinch this last turn, I'd probably still lose. And you just target Landorus here. Sucker Punch or Sacred Sword. Oh, but I'm just going to activate Weak Armor Weakness Policy now. I needed to U-turn there. <laughs> this is crazy! <laughs> <laughs> What? Uh... Wow. Honestly, so sick. Losing a game like this, I really don't mind. But I really do think if we had just not flinched with Wo Chan or gotten Crow Landers early, we'd be in pretty good shape, but oi. What a game. Anyway, is there any way in which I can win now? Okay, I think the win is them really messing up, and once again, not just going for a 100% accurate attack onto Landorus. So, like, the win call I see right now is I they, like, go for Ice Gold Crash with Champau for some reason, they expanding force onto Wo Chan, I U-turn to knock out Arm Rouge, and then it'd actually be a 3v1 if they somehow didn't knock out Landorus here. So we should lose, but, like, if they, like, made a critical misplay here, I could actually win, like that. I mean, that's not a misplay, it, it depends on what they do here with Champau. 
Wait, we actually might have just won off that. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, this is why you never give up in Pokemon, that's for sure. Oh my god. What? Okay, because the thing is, now I have two Intimidates onto that Champau, right? So, my Heatran should survive an attack. And the Leftovers recovery is so crucial. So I actually feel pretty good about, like, we just went from, hey, this game is definitely lost, to, I think I win. All they needed to do was go for an 100% accurate attack onto the Lander slot, and this game was 100% over. But that's why you play, you never give up in Pokemon, right? One misstep and you can still win. This game is absolutely ridiculous. Um... Yeah, I mean, Heatran is not fainting here. I'm going to click Heat Wave. Well, I mean, is Earth Power ever a two-hit knockout here? I think I should actually confirm that, right? Because I assume they have Focus Hash here anyway. So U-turn and Earth Power. Yeah, they just Ice Core Crash into Landers. That's fine. <sighs> I've gotten two Intimidates on Champau, so it's actually looking good. This game is nuts. Oh yeah, Earth Power is a two-hit knockout. Okay, nice. Uh, okay, well, I just protect now and get more leftovers recovery and hope for no flinch or crit. Oh my gosh. The the sets in this. This this was nuts. <laughs> Between the flinch on Wochan, the crit onto Landorus, the endure weak armor, weakness policy, armor roof set, and somehow actually be in a position to win despite all of that is truly one for the books. Okay. Just Earth Power again. <laughs> it's so fitting. That's so anticlimactic. I wanted them to hit that. That's like the worst way to win a game like this after all of that drama. They just miss Ice Go Crash anyway. Oh my gosh. That was... <laughs> yeah, like in that scenario, Expanding Force did so much in a Heatran previously that they didn't need to double up into that slot, right? I was playing towards an Ice Go Crash miss, but they actually just went for... The double up onto the Wo Chan switch in, and that also saved me. So, oh, I I need to take a break after that. That was what just happened. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this one. So thank you so much as always for joining me. That was an absolutely nuts episode, and I'm really happy to just feature the best Wo Chan team from this year's World Championships. And honestly, maybe one of the most well-constructed Wochan teams I've seen throughout all of Scarlet and Violet VGC. So huge thanks to Joe for building and sharing this team. Congratulations to him for a top 32 finish at Worlds, and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.